sometimes in um, science we may have um, added some material into a solvent of some sort, but there, not all of that material may go into solution. So we have a really exaggerated example here where I've got some rocks in a water solution. And if I were to stir those up, I could get those rocks suspended, but they're going to immediately, though, settle out. If I'm interested, sometimes what I want, though, is just the solution above that material that is not dissolved. And so I might need to decant that material from um, one container and collect the supernatant, or just that liquid portion, in another container. So that's what I'm going to show you here. I'm going to use my glass stirring rod again. And in this case, I'm going to pour from the one container into the other but I need to do it very carefully so that none of the actually, uh, the rocks in this case, or the material that is not in solution actually transfers between the two containers. What that might mean is that I have some material left that I'm not able to decant. In the last segment, you learned about how we can precisely measure smaller volumes of liquids um, that we might need to use in a, in a lab. If you're going to have to measure a, a volume much larger than 10 milliliters, you will probably do so in a graduated cylinder. This is just a reminder. Remember, when you're reading the volume on a graduated cylinder, you want to look at the meniscus, and you're reading the bottom of that meniscus as the volume of that liquid. All right, so moving on from there, uh, we have pipetted a certain volume of solution into a test tube. Sometimes we may want to heat that test tube for a period of time. I'm going to use a test tube tongs to put my test tube in a hot water bath. Now, I've set this hot water bath up um, a few minutes ago. I put a volume of water into a larger beaker and turned on my hot plate. Um, one of the problems that we sometimes see with students is that they, they feel like that water bath has to be boiling really, really, really hard. It doesn't have to. It needs to be um, almost just small bubbles forming. That's usually a hot enough solution. If you get it boiling really rapidly, it knocks the test tubes around in the beaker quite um, a bit. Sometimes they break. So anyway, I have my test tube using my test tube clamp or, or test tube holder. I'm going to put it in the water bath. If it's going to have to be in there for a period of time, well, this is a very stiff set of test tube holders. Um, I will remove it so it doesn't get caught on something. I'll let my solution heat up for whatever period of time my lab procedure tells me to. Now, when I'm finished, I'm going to come back with my test tube holder. Again, I'm going to get a hold of my test tube and I'm going to be sure to put it into a test tube rack so that it has a chance to cool down and it doesn't spill on my lab table. If I'm done with my hot water bath, I'm going to make sure I turn off my hot plate. I'm going to use these beaker holders and I'm going to remove the beaker but I must not set it directly on our lab tables. That damages the surface of the lab table. So I'm going to use this clamp, this test, this beaker holder. I'm going to make sure that I have a ceramic trivet, and I will set the beaker down and allow the water bath to cool. All right, when you're working in the lab, uh, we will hand out uh, many times a what is called a stock bottle and this stock bottle is our original uh, solution and we do not want to contaminate this stock bottle so we will work from this but we will not put anything back in this container um, be careful when you un uh, take the cap off because you uh, do not want to be placing it on the table uh, as such you want to either place it down upright or just keep it in your hand uh, and then you will pour from the stock bottle into another container usually. And I'm going to use a glass stirring rod to help prevent any spilling. So I'm going to pull 
uh, pour very slowly here into a beaker. Okay, so now I have really a, a second working solution here. And I'm gonna put my glass stirring rod in the sink in case this is something that we do not want on the table. So, should have probably, now really what I should have done is taken this all over so I don't drip and put this down here like this, okay? Now, um, I'm going to show you how to use our uh, pipetters. Uh, pipetters come in uh, different sizes and they fit the pipette that we will, you know, that you will be using. So uh, in our case here, we're going to be working with a 10 milliliter pipette and we are going to use this medium size pipetter. And if you notice here on the uh, pipette, there is a cotton tip here at the end and we don't want to draw liquid up here this far. Uh, we want to stay down in here. There's even a, uh, an orange line here that kind of says uh, this is where you want to keep your uh, liquid in. So uh, we, can, we are going to measure up to 10 milliliters in this pipette. We will put it in here very gently. And then there is a dial here that you use to draw up your liquid and a release valve to release the liquid uh, when you transfer it to another place. Now the other thing that I want to uh, point out here uh, to avoid stripping this apparatus, what we want to do is use the dial to return this to our start position. Okay, so uh, let's say I want to draw up about five milliliters and I want to transfer it to my test tube. I'm just going to put this in pipette in here. We're going to pull it up and I will stop at the five milliliter mark. I will transfer it and I will use the release valve to transfer that five milliliters into the pipette. And there's a little bit of uh, liquid left in the bottom. They are calibrated as such, so just leave that in there. And uh, then again, I will remind you, use the dial to return this back to normal. And if at all possible, try not to touch that tip to either the test tube or your beaker just to prevent any contamination. At Francis Helm, uh, we are very concerned about your safety while you're in our labs. We want you to have the best possible experience in the lab, but to do so, you have to be safe. So we're going to show you a few of the procedures or techniques that we commonly use throughout the year in um, genetics, biology, anatomy and physiology, and probably techniques that you will use in other science classes that you might have here at HAL. Sometimes we don't use a hot water bath to heat a solution. You may have a solution in a test tube that you're going to heat over an open flame. We have an alcohol burner here, and I have my, my test tube, and I'm using my test tube holder, and the first thing that you need to do as, you're, as you are heating this solution is that you have to be sure that the opening of the test tube is not directed at any other person in your lab group or even if you're working, if you have another lab group across the table, make sure it's not directed at any person. Now I am moving this um, test tube back and forth across the flame of this alcohol burner because if I hold it in one spot, then I'm going to have that part of the solution will start to boil before the rest of it does. And you can end up with the, the bubbles from that boiling literally bouncing the solution out of the test tube. So you need to be sure that you're moving your test tube um, back and forth across the flame and that this test tube is not pointed at anyone in your lab. Sometimes you are asked to make some observations about the smell of something, the scent, odor. Uh, what you need to be very careful of though is taking in too much uh, and a good way to prevent that is to use the wafting method. So when you smell something you need to keep it a good distance away and fan your hand and take a little sniff uh, so you only get a few particles uh, instead of uh, maybe a a big breath of ammonia or chlorine that might be in the solution. 
Now, the other thing that I want to talk to you about is just a reminder on using a balance. Uh, remember that when you go to mass anything out, what you, what an easy way to do that, to avoid um, a lot of math, uh, is to zero out or tear your balance. Uh, when you put, first put your uh, measuring container down, so we're using these Flynn balances, and I'm going to pull this plastic cover up, which protects our balance, make sure that I am reading or seeing the balance is reading zero grams. Uh, and if it's not, I'm going to go ahead and just zero that out. And then I'm going to place my weigh boat here down. And it's reading at 2.15 grams, but I'm going to zero that out. So I don't, I don't want to worry about that. Then I'm going to uh, weigh out uh, the mass of some baking soda. And, and now I know that what I'm actually getting is the mass of only the baking soda and not the uh, weigh boat. So I have 0 0.60 grams here of uh, baking soda. So that's called tearing or zeroing out your balance.